In this video, I'm going to discuss the various crossings and the traffic light sequence. So if you struggle with your crossings, your sequence of traffic lights, don't know what order the colors come in, I'm going to discuss it in this video and show you with visual clues, give you some typical questions and answers that the fairy test can throw up. And I'm going to give you some hints and tips, bonuses towards the end. So if you struggle, this video's for you, stay tuned. So let's take a look at the zebra crossing. So you recognize the zebra crossing by the black and white stripes, the black and white poles and the flashing Belisha beacon, which is yellow and it stands out at nighttime so you can spot it. I will go through the various questions and answers a little bit later with this. Then you have your two can crossing. Two can is one for cyclists, one for pedestrians. So two can cross at the same time. That's the easiest way to remember it. This crossing is for cyclists to ride across. This is the only crossing that cyclists are illegally to ride across. All the others, they should dismount and wheel their bike across. And there's a brief explanation on top. You also have a tiger crossing, not to be confused with toucan crossing. This is a tiger crossing, so it's a zebra crossing with a cycle lane attached. Whereas a toucan crossing is light controlled and I will go through the sequence of lights in a minute. So Toucan is a cycle lane attached to a zebra crossing. Cyclists are allowed to cycle across this one as well. Then you have your equestrian crossing, can be called Pegasus crossing as well, but normally in the fairy test, they relate to it as equestrian crossing. This is for horses and pedestrians. The boxes are higher up for the horse rider, so they don't have to dismount to push the button and the box is slightly further back from the roadside so not to be spooked by cars. Whereas the pedestrian um, box where you push the button is a bit closer to the roadside as a standard um, traffic lights. On approach to traffic lights, you may see this sign. Not all traffic lights have them, but you may see this sign. Remember, triangles are warnings. So it's warning you of traffic lights ahead. So now I'm gonna go into the sequence of traffic lights. This question comes up quite a bit on the theory test and some of you guys are really struggling. So I'm gonna go through the sequence in order. So let's start off with the green lights. I will go through the meaning of the lights a little bit later. Remember, always start from the bottom going to the top. So starting off green at the bottom, then you have amber, steady amber, and then you will have red. And then it goes red and amber together and then you're back to green so just to repeat that again it goes green steady amber then red red and amber and then back to green the meaning of the colors let's start again at the bottom with green green is go if the way is clear in other words if it's safe to do so then you can go believe it or not if someone's crossing on a green light it is their priority not yours so you'll have to wait and be patient so steady amber for the theory test is stop behind the line. Remember, if you watch my previous videos, the theory test is always black and white. It's always gonna look for a safe option. So it means stop behind the line. Now, if you're on a driving lesson or a driving test, amber means stop if it's safe to do so. So if it means hitting the brakes and taking a bump from behind, you're better off going through the amber light. The examiner will accept that. But for the theory test, this is what the video is based on. It means stop behind the line. Red always means stop. You should not be going for a red light. And then red and amber is get ready to go. So the question comes up, what should you do with the red and amber light? It's wait for the green light for a driving test or driving lesson, you get ready. For those of you taking driving lessons, that's your preparation, observation, maneuver, which is go on the green light if it's safe to do so. So now we've done the basic explanation, the light sequence and the basic crossings. Let's take a look at some examples. How would you put this together for the theory side of it and also for the driving. As I always say, the theory is related to driving. You need it for your driving lessons. So I'm gonna give you some visual clues with this. So I'm gonna give you a visual example of a zebra crossing with the questions they may ask. As the car's approaching the zebra, because this is your hazard perception, if you're doing hazard perception, you would click. So the question for the theory test is normally if someone's walking nearby or showing the intention to cross, what should you do? And the answer is slow down and speed, prepare to stop. 
The other question is where should you stop at a zebra crossing? The common answer is before the zigzag. That's what they're talking about when they say before the zigzag. Obviously that's too soon. You stop at the zebra crossing. And wait for them to fully cross and then you can drive on if it's safe to do so. So that's the zebra crossing. Now let's take a look at the puffin crossing. So we're now gonna take a look at the puffin crossing. So if you look at the image of the lights, we're starting from the bottom to top. So green is go if it's safe to do so. Remember steady amber is stop for the fairy side of it. Stop behind the line. Red means stop, you should not be going for a red light. Red and amber is get ready to go. And green is go. Puffing are sensors. So someone pushes the button, it senses someone's there. If no what if someone pushes the button and they walk off, it will not change to red. But on this occasion, on the example, someone is going to be there. So they've pushed the button and the lights will change to red. So you should be slowing down to a stop. In this situation, you can get the car ready, prep, first gear button point. Then it's going to go to red and amber once the person's gone. So it senses no one's there. So it's red and amber, get ready. And green is go if it's safe to do so. That's your puffing crossing. So now let's take a look at the pelican crossing. So again, if you look at the light sequence, this is slightly different. So again, starting from the bottom, green means go if it's safe to do so. Steady amber means stop behind the line. Red means stop, you shouldn't be going any further. And then it will go to flashing amber. Pelican crossing the only one with a flashing amber sequence. And then it's gonna to go to green. But let's tackle the flashing amber before I give you a live visual. Flashing amber for the fairy test means give way to pedestrians on the crossing, already on the crossing. So that question comes up. What should you do at a pelican crossing if the light is flashing? You give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. If you're doing a driving lesson or a driving test, you can go on the flashing amber when it's safe to do so. So let's see this play out. So again, the person has pushed the button, the lights have changed, you should be slowing down, being prepared to stop. So the person will start to cross. And then when it goes to flashing amber for the fairy test, you give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. For a driving lesson or a driving test, you can go on the flashing amber once the person's fully crossed. Do not wait for a steady green. So hopefully that's cleared up a little bit of confusion if you had any um, with the light sequence and what the crossing, the various crossings are. Now I'm gonna give you some little hints, tips and bonus that I've just threw in there because it's all about the lights as well. So as an added bonus, this image comes up on the fairy test quite a lot. They refer to it with the level crossing mainly. And the question is, what's the first sign or warning sign that a train is coming? It's an amber light. So it's a steady amber light. They have to warn you first, it doesn't go straight to red. So the question I repeat, what's the first sign a train is coming? It's an amber light. So this one is you're in the left-hand lane at traffic lights waiting to turn left, which signal means you must wait. For some reason, students really struggle with this. So if you read the question, the last um, line, which signal means you must wait, just work out which one you can't go on. So red and amber is the only one without the green in it. Remember green means go if it's safe to do so. So the, um, the red and amber one is the only one without green in it because that's getting ready. All the others have got green. So it means you can go in some shape or form with those ones. That's the easiest way to work out this one. Then they show you this sign. What does this signal mean? And then you've got a green light with a horizontal white line. If you didn't know, the horizontal white lines for trams. So again, the easiest way to work out, look at it from a driver's point of view, because remember you're taking a driving test. So look at, look at it from a driver's point of view. So green means you can go. Both trams and cars can continue. That can't be safe, because remember trams are on tracks, they can't steer. Trams must stop, so if you can go, the safest option has got to be for trams to be stopping. But read the other options. Cars must stop. We know that's not true because it's a green light, you can go. 
both trams and cars must stop again we know that's not true because you can go so the safest option is trams must stop they can change it and reword it slightly and say cars can go but um either way you're looking for the safest option don't go for the obvious answer which is a common answer that in my classroom is both trams and cars can continue that's not a safe option so they show you this image and the question is when can you stop in a cycle area and the answer to this question is when the lights change to amber so you've passed the first line the lights have changed to amber if you remember from early in the video amber for the theory side of it means stop and remember on the theory it's always going to be safe to do that so the only time you can stop in a cycle area for the theory side of it is when the lights have changed to amber and you've already passed the first line that you should be stopping. So hopefully that's cleared up some confusion with your light sequence and the type of crossings that you face on the theory test and the little hints, tips and bonuses that I gave you along the way. If it did and you got some value from that, please like, comment below and subscribe. YouTube's gonna show you a video here. I'm gonna show you a video here. Go off and watch which video is relevant to you and I shall see you in the next video.